An assist or just a poor touch? Well, from the centre forward's perspective, you would have said it was a it, it was, was a great a, it was touch. A layoff. It was, it was a great I, touch I'm, from Clinton. I'm, I'm, Are you saying you saw a few I'm of those saying, from Clinton I'm in his time? Yeah. Well, not necessarily <laughs> him. But I've seen it off a few where they've took the uh, the credit for it, and that was definitely his own. Lee that finish. was his own touch. It certainly was a Lee Hendry finish. Yeah, finished by absolutely. Let's talk about events at Anfield last night. Liverpool won, Arsenal won, so it's still very very tight at the top of the Premier League table. And did we see Clinton how little there is to choose between these teams. We can see it in the league table, but we saw it over 90 minutes as well. Definitely. This title race is going to go to the right to the end. Um, two outstanding teams. I did probably think um, Liverpool did shade it, but I thought Arsenal, the way they started the first 15, 20 minutes, I thought they were outstanding and I thought they were going to blow Liverpool away, but credit to Liverpool, they kept on going. I thought for a 1-1 game, that was a great watch. I think the intensity that was played at from both sides, they both got at each other. Arsenal were frantic at the start and then Liverpool, I thought they showed class and, and uh, you know, credit to them getting back on, on level terms. But I, I just think it was a, a great advert again for the Premier League of what we're seeing in that top title race. You know, to think that Liverpool, I think lots of people would have said Liverpool had, had gone and got a result, but Credit to Arsenal, they've looked so solid defensively. You know, two dip, two best defences, and then you what you look at the stats at the end of, of, of possession shots, and it was literally identical. And that just showed what um, what two teams are, are at at the moment. Really, really good spectacle for for the Premier League. That was good spectacle for the Premier League. Was it a good advert for the officials once again? Should Liverpool have had a penalty for a handball from Martin Erdegaard? This is what Jurgen Klopp made of it. I was waiting until Mr. Dermot explains me the next day what what's really the case. He will find a way to explain me that it was not handball. I don't know. For it, I, that's for me a clear handball. I have no idea if that would have influenced the result or not. I don't even know exactly when it was because I only saw it after the game and not in the game. Well, the good news is that Dermot will be here on Boxing Day morning, so Jürgen can tune in for that one as Liverpool prepare to face Burnley next. Does he have a point, though, Lee, in terms of that handball? I just can't, I can't get my head around it. I literally can't get my head around it. The more I watch it and the more I try and see what White's not, I just cannot understand it. Is that a handball anywhere on the pitch? It's a handball, it's as simple as that. I know his arms is falling away, but does it matter if you're falling over anyway? You clearly have... And the, the, the big thing for me about that is... I think Salah gets on the other end of the, of the, of, of the ball that's going round past Odegaard. And, and that's why I think it's blatantly a penalty. So I will be tuning in as well to see what that's <laughs> got me. Because for Mr. me, it is. Mr. Clock is, is there, watching and now. Mr. Clark, yeah. And I'm going to be, I'm Mr. Gallagher. So yes. listen, Mr. Clock. That's a real upgrade. <laughs> it is an upgrade. It is a penalty. That's a penalty. Yeah. Oh, anyway, because the letter of the law says his hand's out. It's not like it's by his side, it's out. I know it's deflected off him, but his hand's out. So I think Arsenal got away with one there. But for me, it's a penalty. And again, Lee, it's, it's the consistency question, isn't it? That we've seen penalties given this year where it is within a player's movement, even though the hand is a little bit up, it's in their stride or something like that. I remember seeing one very clear one, Joao Gomez for Wolves against Luke, where he's, he's running so his hand's like that and it hits him. Whereas that, he's out there. And that's what I'm saying. It, it, it's, it's, it's getting the consistency right. And that's what I think... I mean, listen, I'm not even a Liverpool fan, but it frustrates me to watch it. And I can only think, imagine what to think, what the fans think, you know, watching the game. Once he goes to Villa, Villa had one on Friday and, and you, you, you look at the situation. But that, for me, I just cannot, I just can't get my head around what they can't see or why, why it's not. And that's why I just, I just feel that the VAR situation, again, is that we're constantly going over and over things during games. We're stopping things, we're waiting, it's taking... It's taking a little bit of excitement out of the game, I feel. You know, players are not celebrating, players are scared to go over. I mean, it, it's annoying. That, for me, is is just... It tops off another another game where VAR, you know, have got it wrong. Totally wrong. So what about the other fullback, Costa Simicast? Without Andy Robertson, that is a, a big blow for Liverpool at left-back. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I mean, it was quite a, a nasty collision, wasn't it? Um... We, I mean, to look at it, you just felt it. I mean, I think everyone's sort of seen the funny side of it at, at the first at the initial thing, but then to see how he actually fell and, and the, the collision, I mean, it's one of them horrible, horrible decisions. Listening to Klopp at the end saying that, you know, he was shook up himself. He was more concerned about, you know, the player. And, I mean, what a, what a big miss it will be. Um, you know, Gomez came in, didn't he, and, and, and sort of did a job in there. But again, you, you don't want you want all your players, you know, available, fit and available going into to the business end of the season, don't you? So that that'll be a big blow for Liverpool. 
Uh, it's strange as well, Clint, the, the types of injuries, you know, a shoulder for Andy Robertson, yeah. a collarbone for Costa Simicas. Lee touched on the fact that it was Joe Gomez. That pretty much, you would say, the only option Liverpool have. Not even like they can call on James Milner, who used to play at fullback a lot in a crisis. Oh, no, you're right. But I think Gomez done well when he came on. I think Joe Gomez is a good defender. You can play him anywhere. And I, don't, and I think... Andy Robertson is not too far away from maybe making, making his comeback. So that would be good news for Liverpool. But as I said, they'll have to cope without it. I think Gomez can play anywhere. Um, he's a good player. He's, he's played a few times for England as well. So I like Gomez. But Simakas is a huge blow because I thought he'd been outstanding coming in for Robertson. Just sticking with defenders, uh, Clinton, who do you think you'd find it tougher to play against? Virgil van Dijk or William Saliba? Both. <laughs> They're both outstanding, to be fair. They're both brilliant. Van Dijk and Saliba... If I had to pick a team of the season, that would be my centre-back pairing because I just think they both... Who's class? Saliba's brilliant. He's been outstanding. He can match you for pace. He's, he's good on the ball. Maybe Virgil is just a bit... is better than Saliba on the ball, but they're both outstanding defenders. I'd hate to play against both of them. <laughs> um, Simple. <laughs> we, we talk, Lee, obviously, about what it means for, for Arsenal's title challenge, but... We maybe saw towards the end of last season that that was the big thing, wasn't it? As they sort of fell away a little and City surged past them, that being without William Saliba is, was the big thing. If they can keep him fit, they're in business. A million percent. I mean, you only need to look at, like I said, the goals they've conceded this season. And, you know, I think that's, that's been the standout thing, is that they've been defensively a lot more sound. And, you know, there's been obviously a lot of talk around the goalkeeper change and, and whatnot. But, you know, defensively, I think that They've just been, well, they have. They've been absolutely phenomenal. I think the only flip side to it is that, and I think, and I'll, I'll keep saying it, is that I think if they can get someone, an out-and-out centre-forward, I think Arsenal put them uh, put themselves in a category of literally going... To, and and I, I looked at the both sides yesterday and I, I feel a little bit like that with Liverpool as well. I think if they've got someone who's like that out-and-out centre-forward that can go and get them and add to the goals, I just think that that's, that's the area they're missing because both sides look... I've just said Van Dijk's been back to his best, hasn't he, since that injury. Uh, Saliba's been solid. So, you, listen, if you can get the front end of the pitch working out, all of a sudden you put them in the category of literally pushing City to the wire. Who would be the man then, Clinton, in terms of a striker, would you say? See, there's, there's loads of debates about this one, but obviously one that stands out is Ivan Tony. He's been linked um, to the football club, but do I think Brentford will let him go? No. I think they'll, they'll need him from January to the end of the season and maybe he moves in the summer, so maybe Arsenal don't dip into the market because you know what? The January transfer window is the hardest time to get a player in. No clubs are going to let it go. And if you want a top striker, the top teams are not letting their best striker go. So they have to stick with what they got. Listen, I like Jesus. I think Jesus is a brilliant striker, but... Is he going to get you the 20 to 25 goals? I think he does all of his good work outside of the box, but he could prove us all wrong and get the 20, 25 goals. But I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I think I think the, how tight the league is this season. I know it was tight with with City mm. last and, and Arsenal were in, a, in a great position, but I just think that you know they'll have, they'll have been there, thought about it, and yeah. and what can they do that's going to progress from this season? They they pushed to get Raya in, didn't, didn't they? Which they did. I just think that might be just the missing piece of the jigsaw for, for Arsenal. I really do. Um, you know, I, I look at Liverpool as well. You know, Gakpo's not really mm. hit the heights that you'd expect him to. He hasn't filled the boots of Firmino, who, who added to the goals, um, you know, the Jotters. But that's where I just feel that that might be the void that's just missing from them two to go and really say, you know, you know what? You know who they should go and get? On. You two will be happy. Go and get Ollie Watkins. Couldn't well, afford I wouldn't him. be happy with that. <laughs> Couldn't afford it. Um, no, Solanke. Go and get Solanke. <laughs> let's, let's talk, Clinton, about Liverpool's forwards then. Um, yeah. Cody Gakpo's not scored in the Premier League since September the 30th. Yeah. Luis Diaz has scored just once in the Premier League since August the 19th. And Darwin Nunes has scored just once in the Premier League since September the 24th. Um, he's brilliant, but they can't keep relying on Mo exactly. Salah. And in, and in January, they won't be able to rely on Mo Salah. So those three have to step up. And obviously, Jota's injured at the moment, so hopefully he comes back. But... These numbers, he's been putting up these numbers oh. year upon year. He's fantastic. And I've said he's not even a natural number nine. He plays from the right-hand side. He's fantastic. And they are going to miss him. I don't know how many games he missed, four or five games, but they're going to need the others to step up. And listen, they're all good strikers. Nunes, yeah. he just needs a goal. He's getting in there, but he's not taking his chances. But he must be a nightmare for defenders because he plays on the shoulders. And Diaz, listen, he's had a lot of off-field problems. I think now you'll start seeing him get back to his best and Gapo. He's a clever player, isn't he? But these lot do need goals, and you're just hoping 
they can kick on because they're going to miss Salah when he goes to the African I, 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 I mean, I was watching the, the West Ham game yesterday and, you know, I, I could see a Jared Bowen in that Liverpool side. I really could because I and think... You know, sorry to interrupt you, Hendo. You know what um, Jurgen Klopp said? He's one of his favourite players in the Premier I, I League just, as well. I, I really yeah. do think... He, he, <laughs> if, you know, when you, pick, you look at a player in the Premier League at this moment in time and you think he's in great form and he has been brilliant, let's face it, since yeah. he came from Hall where he was excellent... And he's, he has hit the numbers at West Ham um, and he can play in different roles. I just, I watch him and, and I know West Ham fans won't want me to say that, but I watch him and I just think he is ideal for a, for a Liverpool setup. I just really do. I find him, he's very similar in the way of, of, of Jota. You know, he can come in, he can score goals, he can create goals. I just think he would be a, a, a perfect fit for, for, for Anfield and, and Jurgen Klopp, but... I think it'd come at a big price. So excellent. We've managed to annoy Brentford fans probably in the last few minutes. Uh, <laughs> we're and, avoiding Villa and, anyway. Yeah, we're avoiding Villa, but Bre <laughs> Brentford fans and West Ham fans we've managed, we've managed to annoy over the course of the last couple of minutes. Just to, uh, to go back to, to Salah Clinton, 121 goal involvements in 120 matches at Anfield. He's gone past Steven Je Gerrard's record last night. Um, He's also only missed 10 games in six full Premier League seasons. Remarkably durable, never gets injured. This almost, it, January feels, although they've not got loads of league games, like a real test of Liverpool's title credentials. Can they do it without their star man? They're going to have to do it without him. They're going to have to step up. Listen, Mo Salah is world-class. As simple as that. He'll go down as a, a Premier League great when um, one day he leaves them. But you look at these fixtures they've got. Listen, Burnley are on the back of a good result, but you're thinking Liverpool going there full of confidence. Newcastle away is a tough game. You know, I don't care what... That's actually formula. home, that graphic. Oh, that's at home. It needs a little tweak. It's OK, so they, are at, <laughs> so they are at home. But it's still a tough game. You yeah. know what, Newcastle, even though they lo lost recently and then they've got the FA Cup, the EFL Cup, and then Bournemouth away. Bournemouth. So their games, you look at... But Bournemouth are doing well. Yes. Bournemouth have been brilliant. But their games, you're thinking, can Liverpool go and get the points? They can get the points. But as you said... Other, the play, other players and strikers around, apart from Salah, have to step up, but they can step up. And it feels, it feels key to get Jota back, doesn't it? Yeah. I think so. I think, as you know, you, you start taking Salah out of the equation and you're taking a massive, massive void out of that, that side. He is one they go to. He's one they look to to go and win games. He's the one they look to to, to pull something, a rabbit out of a hat at times because he's got that in his locker. He proved that yesterday again, you know, a something out of nothing really moment for, for Mo Salah. And I, I just want to echo what what Clinton's saying, this guy is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, because, as he said, he's not that out-and-out centre-forward, and that's what his numbers are just... They're incredible, what, what he's actually produced, and, and he can create. Is that the games that potentially he misses? Depending on how far Egypt go, yeah. Oh, wow, I yeah. bet Liverpool hope they get knocked out in the first <laughs> That's a lot of games. I thought it was only four. That was the the whole of Egypt as well. Yeah, Brilliant, yeah. good. <laughs> but good. Liverpool fans will be happy. Yeah, yeah Liverpool fans <laughs> would be thrilled to, to have, him, have him back. Do you go along with what Lee said there, that if Liverpool were to go big in one area, and we know they don't tend to make huge numbers of signings in January, that they brought in Luis Diaz at a crucial stage, two Januaries ago, would you be looking in the forward areas again? No, you know what? You know what? I wouldn't be looking in the forward areas. You know where I'd be looking, Robert? In the number six area. That's where, mm. I, even though Endo's coming there and done well, that's what, you know, me personally, if Liverpool had a Declan Rice, I'd make them strong, strong. Um, they'd be challenging massively. They are challenging, but I think they could go and win it because I think Declan Rice, what he's done at Arsenal, has been outstanding. I believe those strikers will score goals. It's just they're going through a phase at the moment. It happens to strikers where you're not going to score goals. As soon as one goes in, they'll go on a good run. And at the moment, they still got Salah to do it. I think Nunes yeah. is, a, is, is one... I, I, I think he's a, he's a fantastic player. And I think he will eventually come to the forefront of things. But I think at this moment in time, it's like, well, he needs to start doing it now. And, and you take Salah out of the equation and then you're saying, you've got to step up and be the man to do that. I don't see it from Gakpo. I'm sorry, but I've, I've watched him beforehand, before he came to, to Liverpool... And I wasn't overly convinced that he was going to be the man for it. And he still, I watch him, and he doesn't seem a Liverpool player, if, that, not, if you not, understand. What he's not is not a natural goal scorer. What he likes to do is drop into little pockets. He likes to be like Bobby Firmino, but he's not that... I don't think he's as good as Bobby Firmino, but that enables Salah. I think they'll start playing Nunes sometimes off the left-hand side. With Jota down the middle? Or? Yeah, with Jota down the middle and Mohamed Salah. And then interchange, you can bring Diaz on. But they've got a lot of options. They will score goals. I don't worry about Liverpool. You, you do wonder whether th those two drawing yesterday, Liverpool drew the, the previous week at home against Manchester United as well, that 
as they made their way back from Saudi Arabia, Manchester City just allowed themselves a quiet smile because... Oh, Pep was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool have not been able to put a bit of scoreboard pressure on. And you can always say, oh, well, City have got the games in hand, but you've got to go and win those games. But they've not galloped away from Liverpool over the last week or so. No, they haven't. But we, we get to the January, February, and we know what Man City can do. We've seen it season upon season where they can go 10 games unbeaten. But there's still a lot to play for. I've always said it. I always still think Man City are the team um, to beat. But it's so tight. And you know what? It's going to be a proper title race. <laughs> yes, this is not going to be 10 points. No, this is going to be like one or two points. And this is why we, this is why this is the best league in the, the world. The difference in comparison to last season was Erling Haaland. You know, he would, he'd scored that many goals himself, hadn't he? You know, for, mm. for, uh, for Man City. And I just think, again, the, the top teams this weekend have missed a real big trick, I think, because you start putting more pressure on Manchester City, and they are under pressure. There's no doubt that you know that they haven't been anywhere near what they they should be. Um, but we're coming back now. We've got a game in hand. We win that, and we're three points off. And, and you're just thinking to yourself, who, how on earth are we talking? Who wins it? Who, Man City win. Man City. Oh, you're presenting now, are you? <laughs> no, Quickly, because yeah, I want yeah. to ask you that. Man City win the league. I think it's going to be a great title race and we're going to see loads of good football. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> It'll be Man City and Villa. Let me ask you... Let, <laughs> me, ask, for let me ask you instead, how many teams do you think can win it? Five can win it. One, two, three. Uh, Five that are there. I'm going to go four. And that's Arsenal, Liverpool, Villa and Man City. OK. I'm, oh, leaving, right. Tottenham, I'm leaving Tottenham out of it. Oh, Yeah. If you just gone from five to four. <laughs> no, no, I'm leaving to no, I'm leaving Tottenham in it. I'm leaving oh, yeah. Tottenham. Yeah, I've got to leave Tottenham. No, they still got a chance. If you look nah, at the points table, no, you Madison, can't rule out. Son, Son, Son's flying away. He's gone. Yeah, but Mad but Madison comes back in January and Van der Veen. Yeah, but take Son out of the equation. Yeah, we have to, yeah, we have to sign. They've got no Harry Kane. They've got no... Nah. Can I just say, by the way, I don't really like the way that you prepared yourself for the Christmas Day charades by saying flying away, know, as, though yeah. people, <laughs> as though people didn't know how he was going to get there. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you very much. Yeah,